Well, good morning, everybody. So awesome to see all of you here today, whether you're a first-time guest with us or you're, a, you're a, a regular attender and part of our church family. We are thrilled and just delighted that you all are here. Are you ready for God's Word this morning? I feel like God has placed a, a burden, a direction on my heart for the last few weeks as we've talked about the truth of God being with us. And I feel like today God wants to just give us a simple re- that he is with us, not just from time to time or not just on special occasions, but he is with us always. He is with us constantly. He is with us in every moment. So we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. But in the last couple of weeks, we've talked about how God has always been with us, especially he walks closely with us when we walk through a valley. None of us are exempt Amen? From going through valleys, difficult challenges, difficult times, stressful seasons in life. And what we learned in that week is that God never says that we won't go through valleys, but what he says is that we will never travel them alone. And the week after that, we talked about how God is with us in a wilderness, we talked about what the wilderness experience was like and the feelings and, and what, was, what was going on in those difficult times as well. The difference between a valley and a wilderness is oftentimes a wilderness lasts longer. It lasts longer. But I encourage you with the word of God last week and, and told you that our greatest need, our greatest need becomes a gift when it drives us to depend upon God. And so we, we talked about the prophet Elijah and his experience running from the evil queen Jezebel and that whole experience. But what I want you to know in, in this series is this. God is with you. He's with you in that valley as you travel a difficult time. He's with you in that wilderness as you're going through a time of testing or wondering. He is with you always. Would you say that with me today? God is with me always. Say it like you mean it. Come on. God is with me always. Think about that. The almighty God. The one who is all powerful. The one who is all knowing. The one who is ever present. The one who created the universe and everything in it with just the power of his word. The one who works miracles. The one who heals and touches and moves in wonderful, miraculous, awe inspiring ways. That is the God who is with you. That is the God who will never leave you nor forsake you. That is the God that I want to remind you and encourage you in whatever circumstance you may be facing today, whatever feelings you may be going through today and experiencing on this Christmas weekend, I want you to know God is with you. Amen? He is with you always. I looked up that word always in the Greek, and guess what? It means always. Okay? (laughs) You're like, Pastor, you should have studied a little bit harder, okay? But listen, I want you to think about this. I looked up synonyms for always, and I put them up on the screen. I want you to think about this in terms of God is with you always, at all times, on all occasions, everlastingly, forever, eternally, constantly, perpetually, Unendingly, ceaselessly, evermore, invariably, unceasingly, endlessly. God is with us always. My prayer during this Christmas season is that we do not miss this profound, life-changing truth. We can rush through the Christmas season with all the busyness of lights and presents and shopping and all the, all the things, the wonderful things that we enjoy in our Christmas time. But if we forget the presence of Christ, all of that other stuff becomes empty and meaningless. And so my prayer is that God, let us be a people, let me be a pastor, let me be a husband, a dad, who does not forget about the presence of of Christ because I'm so distracted by the presence of Christmas. 
Matthew chapter 1 tells the, how the story of how Jesus the Messiah was born. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn there. It'll be up on your screen as well. You can follow along that way. But as we read this story, I want us to just remember how deeply awesome it is that the God of all creation, the God of the universe, is the God, the Word, that became flesh. And dwelt among us. This is the story of Jesus being born. Matthew chapter 1, we'll start in verse 18. It says this, This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant How? through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. Verse 20. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. How many of you guys know that God still speaks in dreams and in visions and in supernatural ways? Joseph... Son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived how? by the Holy Spirit. Verse 21. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. Everybody say that with me. Jesus. You know what the name Jesus means? It means God saves or God rescues or God brings salvation this is what the name of Jesus means and he says for he will save his people from their sins their sins are what the sin they have missed the mark we've all fallen short of the glory of God right we all need rescuing we all need saving this is why Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us so that we may be saved from our sins. Our sins is what separates us from God. Our sins cannot be tolerated by a holy God. And so Jesus was sent to save us from our sins. There was no other way to accomplish this. Jesus became a ransom. He became the payment for our sins. And it, say, and it says this. And she will save. And she will have a son. And you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. Verse 22. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. And then he quotes Isaiah chapter 7. Verse 14. He says this, and this is our theme verse. This is what we've been looking at for the last few weeks. It says, look, the virgin will conceive a child, and she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Everybody say that word with me. Emmanuel. What a beautiful name and title of Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. Emmanuel, which means God with us. I'm just going to be very honest with you in this moment and just vulnerable and tell you that that truth has, th- has flown right in the face at times of my personal experience. There have been times in my life, especially in the most difficult times, where I have questioned, where I have wondered where I have asked myself and I've asked God, is God really with me always? And I've struggled with that, and and at times I really, really questioned it because I can't always see Him working, right? I can't always sense His presence near me. I can't seem to always hear His voice. And so when I go through those difficult times in life, I sometimes honestly will question, will question, 
And I will think to myself, well, if, if, if God is, if the truth is God is with me, then where are you? Why can't I see you? Why can't I sense you? Why can't I hear you? And are you really with me always? I mean, I've struggled just being open and honest with you. I've struggled with anxiety and depression in my life. I've had to take medicine from time to time. I've struggled with, uh, we, we've had several miscarriages in our, in our marriage. And, and those are just some of the most difficult losses and, and times of grief that, that a person you know, experiences, and I've experienced hard time after hard time, even, even planting a church. I mean, we moved from uh, Tennessee to Las Vegas. I mean, can it get any different, right? <laughs> and we thought, we thought in our na- naive, naivety, is that a word, uh, that it was going to be like a, a cakewalk, right? Or it was going to be easy, like we had a plan, we knew what we were doing. No. We thought that it was going to be like, okay, we, we move, and this is church planting journey. Oh, man, it's just going up and up and up, and it's smooth, and it's good and easy, and all, everything's just kind of falling into place really, really easily. We're going to have enough money to survive. We're going to have enough money to buy uh, groceries and buy our kids Christmas presents. But, but do you think it's been like that? Absolutely not. It's been more like this. <laughs> Boop. There you are. <laughs> but in those difficult times, we, we, we've wondered and we've struggled. I mean, we're human. We're made out of dust. Like, we're, we're normal people. And we, and, we, and we question, like, God, is it supposed to be working out this difficult? Is it supposed to be this, this hard? And I wonder to myself, God, are you really with me? <laughs> are you really with me? And are you with me always? You know, it's, it's in those times of pain. It's in those times of confusion and heartache that the devil will take the opportunity to whisper some things to us. And those things are always lies. But he will say things like this. God is not with you. He has never been with you. You are making all of this up in your head. That what you read in the Bible is not true. And the devil will whisper things like, God doesn't see you. You're all alone. In fact, God doesn't even care about you. He never has and he never will. And we hear those kinds of things being whispered as lies to us. You've been left all alone to face this journey all by yourself. You've been abandoned. You've been rejected. You've been forsaken. You are just not worthy of God's love. You are not worthy of God's presence in your, in your life. And I would hear those things, and I wonder this morning, have you ever heard those kinds of lies in your life? And let me take it a step deeper. Have you ever believed those kinds of lies in your life? Sometimes we find ourselves in those seasons of life where we truly wonder, is God with us? Sometimes we struggle to even explain how we're feeling to the people around us. Sometimes our friends, our spouses, our family members just are unable to really grasp what we're struggling with. And sometimes we go through life a little bit lost, a little bit confused, a little bit stuck, and maybe a little angry, asking ourselves, where is God? Is he really with me always? Because it felt like he might be with me, like when things were good in the past, but now I'm not so sure he's with me. Has he abandoned me because I have issues? And Lord knows I have issues. Anybody have issues? Okay, if you're not raising your hand, that's, that may be your issue right there. <laughs> Has he forsaken me because I just don't measure up? I'm just not good enough because I'm definitely a work in progress. Any works in progress is in the room. Has he rejected me because I don't have it all together? And as my wife would say, some of us are just a hot mess. And when she has a t-shirt that 
that she's not wearing it right now, but it, it says captain of the struggle bus. And sometimes we are just that. Sometimes we are a hot mess, right? Sometimes we are captains of the struggle bus. But I want you to know today, I want you to hear this very clearly today. You matter to God. And He loves you. He has not abandoned you. He has not rejected you. He has not left you to do this life on your own. He is with you. And I put, I put this up on the screen if you're taking notes. Just let this sink in. You are not alone. You are never alone. In fact, Emmanuel is with you. He is with you right now. He is holding you. He is comforting you. He is strengthening you. And most of all, He is loving you no matter what. This is the exact promise that we find repeated over and over throughout the whole scriptures, the Old Testament and the New Testament. We hear scriptures like Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 where the Lord says to Joshua who is about to take up a a new mission and go into battle and take the land and God says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. Why? For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God says, I'm with you. Don't be discouraged. Don't be down and out. Don't let your feelings rule the day. No. Know the truth. Have a conviction in your heart that no no matter what my situation, no matter how I'm feeling about things, the truth is steadfast and unchanging. God is with you always. Even in Isaiah chapter 41, the Lord says to Isaiah as he prophesies to the nations, he says, fear not. Why? For I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Go on to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. He says, the Lord says this. To Moses and the people of Israel, he says, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, your enemies, those other people who are out to get you. Why? For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. This is the truth of God's word. And we find our way over into the New Testament We read that when Jesus was sharing the great commandment with his disciples, he was saying, guys, I'm about to leave here, but I'm leaving you a mission. But I want you to know, in Matthew 28, it says, he said, therefore, go and make those disciples of all the nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Now look at these next words. And surely... I am with you always. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And Jesus was saying to those those disciples, those apostles that he was sending out. He's saying, man, things may get tough. And they probably will. They, you will be persecuted. It will be hard. It will be a challenge. But listen to me. You have a mission to do. And the good news is you can have courage be, to fulfill that mission because I am with you. I'm with you. On every occasion, at all times, Jesus said, I am with you. Even as you fulfill the great commission. And I love what it says in, over in John chapter 14. Because remember, Jesus was telling his disciples, like, I'm not going to be with you forever. I'm going to suffer and die. And, and I'm going to be laid in the tomb for three days. And on that third day, I'm going to be raised again to life. But after that, after I've shown myself to everybody and convinced them that I am alive, I'm going back to the Father. But Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to leave you alone to do this life all by yourself. Over in John 14, he says this, And I will ask the Father, 
and he will give you another helper. He will give you another helper. And look at these words, to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. And he dwells with you. And not only that, he will be in you. This is the person of the Holy Spirit whom the Father has sent. We are never alone, not even today, not even when Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. We are never alone because the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit is with us always. Strengthening us. Somebody needs to strengthen that deer right there. (laughs) Empowering us. I just kicked it off. Thank you. But do you hear the message that, is, that God is communicating throughout the whole scripture in those Old Testament scriptures and the New Testament scriptures? He's saying this refrain over and over and over again. This is our triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit saying to you and I, no matter the situation, No matter the challenge, no matter the hardship, no matter the feelings that you have right now about this or that. He says, I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. My friends, I want you to hear this. His name is Emmanuel. He is with you. He is with you every step of the way. Jot this down if you're taking notes. This really ministered to me. I hope it blesses some of you today. Nothing gives me more courage than knowing that God is with me. Nothing gives me more courage. Like if I know that I know that I know without a shadow of a doubt that God is with me, boy, I feel like I can do anything he calls me to do. I feel like I can face any challenge. I feel like I can, I can, I can, it may be difficult, it may be kind of scary, it may be a, cha- a, 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 a something that is just hard to get through, but if I know that He is with me, it gives me the courage I need to proceed and to do it afraid and to do it anyway. Nothing gives me more courage than knowing He is with me. The God, the creator of the universe, the all-powerful one, he is right here with me. He's not uninvolved. He's not far off. And when we don't know what to do, he does. And he never gets tired. He never gets worn out. And he never needs a break. If I know that he is with me, I can have the courage to do anything. I heard a story about a little girl who was left alone at home one night when her, her, her parents were called away on some emergency. And they tried to assure the little girl that everything would be okay and the house was locked up and everything that they, they would try to get back as quickly as they possibly could. But unfortunately, the emergency lasted longer than they thought it would. And they thought that they, they were concerned that the little girl would be upset when they returned for taking so long. So when they returned, they asked her if she was okay. And she said, oh, I wasn't afraid, she said. When you're here, God expects you to take care of me. But when you're gone, he does it all by himself. Right? Right? When we know that God is with us, it gives us the courage we need to face the challenges of this life. Now you contrast that story with another story about a little boy who spilled some milk on the kitchen floor before going to bed at night. And his mom asked him to go out and get a mop outside from the back porch. He said, no, no, mommy, it's dark out there and I'm scared. And the mother tried to reassure him that Jesus was with him and that Jesus was there and there was nothing to be afraid of. 
And finally, he mustered enough courage to stick out his head out, outside the door. And he called out into the darkness and he said, Lord, if you're there, could you hand me the mop, please? Courage. When we know that God is with us, it gives us the courage we need to face life's challenges. I read a, a writing, I'm, it's not a story, but it's a writing by a pastor friend named John Lynch. So one of our m- members of our church shared it with me on Facebook this week. I want to read it to you. I want you to let this sink in. He said this, stunning. Stunning that he was given a name to explain exactly where he is during my deepest need. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He's not a concept, a theory, or a theology. He's not a system. He's not a religion. He's not an allegory. He is not an ideal. He is not some memory. He is not once or at one time. He is not less real now than he was to those who could touch him. He is not the property of the religious or any church or any denomination or any location. He is not a fable created to make children shape up. He is not over there, up there, or away from here. He is not every now and then or on only special occasions. He is right here. He is right now, fully, completely. He is in you, around you, with you, over you, for you, on time, in the middle of, Surrounding you and the ones you love. He is in complete power. Communicating as clearly as in any time in history. Working perfectly for you. Through you and in you. Thinking about you every single moment. Walking directly into the middle of your worst day. Walking directly into the middle of your worst moment. Your worst fear, your chronic pain, your loneliness, your doubts, your insecurity, your sickness, your tragedy, your fragileness, your relationships, and your longing to make life count. He is with you every step of the way. And He is here. And He is here now. And He stands over us in our darkest hour. Lifting us up when we're too exhausted, when we're too devastated, when we're too hopeless, too failed, or too far gone. He will never leave us and never forsake us. He is here right now drawing us to the cross at every moment so that we can experience the extravagance of Christ's love for us and to bring the power of the resurrection into our present moment. He is here to protect you from the despair, from the condemning voices, the regrets, and the shame. He is here to show you the new way in this new season. He is here to whisper who you are in him and who he is in you. He's here to be glorified. He's here to be enjoyed, to be trusted, to be loved, to be worshipped by you. He is here, whether you want Him here or not. He is here doing exactly right, even when you don't believe it. He is here in the pain that you thought He'd never allow. He is here in the yelling at Him that you thought you'd never dare. Who is He? He is God with us. He is God with me. He is God with you. 
His name is Emmanuel. Remember, the virgin shall give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. My friends, aren't you glad that we serve a God who is with us, who is not uh, far off? Go ahead. Let's give him praise. I want to ask our uh, worship team to come up. I just want to close with, with a question for you. As you think about where you're at right now in your spiritual journey, you're here this Christmas weekend. What's going on in your life? And the question I want to pose to you is this. Do you need Emmanuel today? Do you need Emmanuel today? Are you facing a challenge? Are you going through a wilderness? Are you walking through that valley? And do you need to know that God is with you always? Some of us, you're like me and you've wondered from time to time, is he really there? Does he really care? Is he interested in me and what I'm going through? But I want you to know today that he does. When you're hurting, where is he? He's right there with you. When you're devastated, where is he? He's right there with you, devastated with you. He's walking with you every step of the way. Friends, he's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He's never going to turn his back on you. And reject you. My encouragement for you today is to never resist him. When you resist God, you resist your healer. When you resist God, your father, who is always with you, you you resist your comfort. You resist your own strengthening. You resist having renewed hope. When you resist him. So do you need Emmanuel today? Let's all bow our heads, close our eyes. If you're here today and you would say, it's Christmas weekend, but pastor, I'm going through it. I'm walking through that valley or that wilderness or... It's the most difficult storm I've ever had to endure in my life, and I, and I just don't know where to turn. And I'm here today, and I'm going to turn to Emmanuel. I'm going to turn to Jesus. I'm going to turn to my Father. I'm going to turn to the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to receive your grace today, God. I'm going to receive your comfort and your help and your assurance that you are with me today. If that's you and you're here and you would say, Pastor, I'm really going through it. I just want you to raise your hand up to the Lord and say, that's me. This is for me exactly today. This message is for me today. Come on, raise your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord sees you. You can put your hands down. Let's let's pray together. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for your truth that sets us free. Lord, help us to remember today that you will never leave us nor forsake us. You have your eye upon us. You care for us. You comfort us. You hold us. You strengthen us. And you'll never turn your back on us. We thank you for that, Lord. And I pray for my brothers and sisters today who raised their hands or those who may have responded by way of YouTube. I pray, Lord, for them. We all pray for them. And we, we have found ourselves in those situations, those seasons of life from time to time. We know how it feels. And we just want to lift up our brothers and sisters right now. And we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would strengthen them. Lord, that you would grant them your peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, as they look to you, I pray... God, that they be comforted by the presence of the Holy Spirit. As they look to you, God, 
I pray that they would be, uh, have a fresh awareness that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords and that you are reigning and ruling in heaven and over all the universe and even in our lives. Lord, let us take comfort. Let us take courage to know that you are with us always. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen. I want to ask you one last question. Are you here today and you've never confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior? Maybe today you need the assurance of salvation. Maybe today you need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are saved, that you have been born again, that you have an eternal hope. And maybe you're here today and you're saying, yes, today needs to be a brand new start for me because I'm, tri I'm tired of trying to live this life on my own. I'm tired of being separated from God. I'm tired of being spiritually dead and empty. And I need a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I need to confess him as my Lord and my Savior today. If that's you, I want to invite you to pray this prayer after me to begin that relationship. Remember, it's, this is not the end all be all. No, this is the beginning of a relationship. And so if that's you today and you like to pray that prayer with me, I want to invite everyone to pray after me. But from your hearts, there's no magic in these words, but the meaning and the power of this comes from your heart. Would you say this with me? He Dear Heavenly Father, I repent for being master of my own life and living separate from you. I turn away from my sin and I turn towards you. I confess today with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. And I receive you today, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. And I welcome you today, Holy Spirit. Jesus, please baptize me in the Holy Spirit. And by faith, I receive him now. Thank you, Father, for filling me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Let me walk with you the rest of my days. I give you my life, Lord. Use it for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord praise and thanks? <clears throat>